Hello, beautiful souls. Good day, good day. It's Brittany here. Um, so I really felt inspired to pick up the camera today. Uh, I've picked it up a few times, um, yet it seems like there is always some sort of technical difficulty that, that happens and I'm not able to get it out. And so I just realized that maybe those videos are more for me <laughs> because as we teach, we learn anyway. So we'll see if this one gets out there. Um, but I am very excited. I feel like the doors have opened uh, uh, for a new chapter in our lives here. And um, Tom and I have kind of transitioned out of the Fraser Park area and we're back into Los Angeles, California, or just the outskirts there. Um, and, uh, and then from here, we're going to be headed to the San Francisco Bay area. And it's just, Oh my goodness, stuff with our startup startup is really kicking into gear. So we're excited to really be extending these creations that God has given us to give. And um, so I guess that's kind of part of the inspiration for today as to why I wanted to do this topic. And the topic that was kind of given me is the total commitment. We have to be totally committed to our goal. And ultimately, what we're learning through A Course in Miracles is that we all share one goal, and that goal is God. That goal is perfect peace for us and for humanity. And so we literally must be totally committed. Mind, word, thought, action, being, energy, everything must be totally 100 billion thousand percent committed to the goal of perfect peace. And um, if we're not totally committed, then it's so easy to fall off and forget the goal for a little while and go into our own little direction where you know we have difficulties and then we slowly come back and you know we'll do that for a while but if we are totally committed to the goal in our mind it's much easier to stay on track it's much easier to remember and it's much easier to be that demonstration that is needed in this world of that that peace and that happiness and and that purpose that can be exemplified here for our brothers and sisters to join our hands and do it with us so I really felt like I wanted to go through this part in the text it is from chapter seven in the consistency of the kingdom. Yes, God's kingdom of love that is present here in our hearts now for us to accept and experience. And the chapter, um, the, the heading in the chapter is the total commitment. So if you're reading from the sparkly as I am, it is page 160. Um, and uh, let's go forward and let's see what this kind of brings to our awareness today. Whenever you deny a blessing to a brother, you will feel deprived. This is because denial is as total as love. It is as impossible to deny part of the sonship as it is to love it in part. Nor is it possible to love it totally at times. You cannot be totally committed sometimes. Key line here. You cannot be totally committed sometimes. <laughs> Remember a very early lesson. Never underestimate the power of denial. It has no power in itself, but you can give it the power of your mind whose power is without limit of any kind. If you use it to deny reality, reality is gone for you. Reality cannot be partially accept, appreciated. Reality cannot be partially appreciated. That is why denying any part of it means you have lost awareness of all of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is so crucial. And Jesus is very black and white on this matter. And to the ego, it scares the crap out of the ego because this brings us to the position of choice again, the position of decision. Where am I going to put my mind? Where am I going to put my focus? What am I going to choose to be my reality? Jesus says that we can't partially appreciate reality. We have to appreciate reality in its totality. If we don't appreciate reality in its totality, we don't know reality. Reality is whole, reality is complete, reality is perfect as God created it to be, and we can't not know some of it. And so Jesus is being very, very, very specific here that we have to use denial appropriately. Because if we use denial to deny the reality of God's kingdom, the reality of God's truth, which is perfect happiness for his souls, well, then we're not going to experience that because we have denied it in our own mind. 
And this is why mind training is so necessary so that we can move the denial into denying the illusions, denying the separations, denying the sufferings and the pains, so that we can look past what we made and what is untrue and onto that which is real, the reality of, of the kingdom where we really do reside. And based upon that choice of what we want to be real for us, we will see it, we will experience it, we will have it, and we will know that it is true. So reality is total, you know? Um, you cannot be totally committed sometimes. So this is allowing us to kind of almost become aware of where we may be wavering in our commitment um, and, and kind of come back on board to being totally committed all of the time, right? This is where the consistency comes in. This is the negative side of the law as it operates in this world. Yet denial is a defense. And so it is as capable of being used positively as it is of being used destructively. Used negatively, it will be destructive because it will be used for attack. But in the service of the Holy Spirit, the law requires you to recognize only part of reality to appreciate all of it. Mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. You will never be able to exclude yourself from what you project. So literally breaking this down, we are starting to see that, you know, um, where does he say? Uh, yes, denial is a defense, and so it is capable of being used positively as it is being used destructively. So at first, denial is being used destructively because you're denying who you really are. You're denying that God has given you everything. You're denying that God wills you perfect happiness. And that suffering in any form, even this much, is not God's will. And so because of that, we can almost place the denial in the hands of the Holy Spirit instead. And then the Holy Spirit will allow us to go through that process of denying what is not true. And then ultimately looking upon and remembering what is true. And it is even, he's even saying here, like, our mind is too powerful to be subject to exclusion. Like, our mind, the mind of God that we share with him, you know, our right mind, um, is limitless. It's absolutely infinite and creative, totally outside the box limitless. And so because it is limitless and absolutely mighty powerful, it includes everyone and everything because that's how God thinks. God thinks in inclusion. There is no exclusion. So you cannot separate yourself from what you project, right? So whatever you see in your world, however you experience your world and your relationships and your life, the things you hate, the things you like, the things you don't like, the things that are struggling, all of the confusions, that's what you're projecting. So you can't separate yourself from what you're projecting. It's not this is the world and the world's doing this to you. That's your projection. So because it's your projection, you can now start to change the projector so that you project something else. And this is how powerful our mind is, right? Change the mind, change the projector, totally different experience. And so here we go, getting practical here. When a brother acts insanely, he is offering you an opportunity to bless him. His need is yours. You need the blessing you can offer him. There is no way you have it except by giving it. This is the law of God, and there are no exceptions. What you deny, you lack because it is lacking. But because you have denied it in another, you are therefore not aware of it in you. Every response you make is determined by what you think you are. And what you want to be is what you think you are. Therefore, what you want to be determines every response you make. Oh, this is so crucial. And this is so crucial because this is the law of God. The law of God is giving. And so if I want to be blessed, and I want to be forgiven, and I want to be at peace, I must give the blessing. I must give the forgiveness. I must give the peace. So Jesus is reminding us that when our brother acts insanely, whether it be our child, whether it be our partner, whether it be a Hitler figure in the world, whether it be some you know random person doing crazy deeds on the street, um, all of these people who are acting insanely at the time 
it's giving us an opportunity to bless them. It's giving us an opportunity to ask ourselves, do I want to condemn them? Do I want to judge them? Do I want to hate them? Do I want to blame them? Or do I want to bless them? And if I choose the latter, blessing them, um, then what you do is you then recognize your need as being the same as theirs. Whoop, it equalizes us. My need is the same as my brother's need. So when I bless my brother, I'm blessing myself. When I bless my brother, I'm blessing myself. This is the law of God, and it cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. And so if I'm feeling like there's something lacking within myself, it is only because you have not given. That's it. If I feel like there's something lacking within myself, it's because there's a part in me where I have not given. And Jesus is also bringing it back to you that you will give according to what you think you are. So if I see myself as the same as my brother, I will give to my brother because he is one with me. If I see my brother as being separate from me, well then I'm not going to give to him because I think that by giving to him I'm losing something. See what's going on with the dynamic in the mind? It always extends based on how I see myself. Am I the same as this person or am I separate or different from this person? And depending on how you see yourself is how you will respond. Water time. So we always have the power to bless in each and every moment. And if our brother acts insane, it's an opportunity to bless him. All right. You do not need God's blessing, since that you have forever. But you do need yours. The picture you see of yourselves is deprived, unloving, and very vulnerable. You cannot love this. Yet you can very easily escape from it, or better, leave it behind. You are not there, and that is not you. Do not see this picture in anyone, or you have accepted it as you. All illusions about the sonship are dispelled together, as they were made together. Teach no one that he is what you would not want to be. Your brother is the mirror in which you see the image of yourself, as long as perception lasts. And perception will last until the sonship knows itself as whole. How beautiful is this? Jesus is saying that that small, weak, vulnerable self that you see yourself as is not who you are. And simultaneously, that small, maybe aggressive, weak, mean person that you see the other person as is not who they are. And so if you accept that story as being what they are, and letting that be the reality that you see as being this person, you're holding yourself in bondage. You will feel guilty inevitably. You will still hate yourself inevitably. And you will still struggle inevitably. Because that's what you've given to the other person. And there is no one excluded in this equation. And this is why introspection is so necessary and honesty with ourselves is so necessary for us to take a look within our own mind where it is that we are still judging our brothers or hating our brothers or condemning our brothers or seeing our brothers as vulnerable or weak or mean in any way. Because that is the story that we've made up about ourselves. It's not the truth as God created him. And the healing comes in the truth as God created him, replacing the vision in our mind of the story that we once saw. That's the healing up here in vision and transformation of this perception. But trans the, the perception will last until all of the sonship is seen as whole. And that's why you are a savior of the world. And that's why I'm a savior of the world. Because the relationships that we have in our life and in our world and around us are an opportunity to bless, an opportunity to forgive, an opportunity to remember that we are the same and that we have the same need. Our brother needs healing and so do we. There's no degrees of difference. You know, we all need healing. We all need help. Yes, in the kingdom of heaven, we are whole, perfect, and complete, but most of the world does not remember that. And so our function is not done blessing, is not done forgiving until the whole world, the whole sonship, remembers themselves as whole. So this is why, you know, being totally committed to this, this goal of actively blessing our brothers instead of condemning our brothers is so integral to salvation. Integral. 
So do not teach. Teach no one that he is what you would not want to be. If this person's an abuser, if this person's an aggressor, if this person's an asshole, you are teaching them what you do not want to be. Do you want to be an abuser, an aggressor, an asshole? No, you don't. Even if you've had the tendency to make those mistakes in the past, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. That's not who that person is. So deny it in them. Use that act of, of denial. Deny the illusions. Deny the stories. Deny the personalities and characters. So that the truth, the reality of who this son of God is can be revealed to you. And therefore you will know yourself as being the same. <laughs> You made perception, and it must last as long as you want it. Illusions are investments. They will last as long as you value them. Values are relative, but they are powerful because they are mental judgments. The only way to dispel illusions is to withdraw all investment from them, and they will have no life for you because you have put them out of your mind. While you include them in it, you are giving life to them, except there is nothing there to receive your gifts. This is so crucial. You must withdraw all your investments from the illusions. Again, not some, not, okay, yeah, maybe I can forgive that characteristic trait. Yeah, maybe I can forgive that action. Yeah, maybe I can forgive this. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness doesn't forgive separate parts of the person or individual or events that happen in the world. Forgiveness is total. Remember, it's complete. It's total. Forgiveness is total. So Jesus is reminding us here that we have to withdraw our investments, all our investments from the illusion, because that is the only way that it will be out of our mind. And if the illusions are out of our mind, we won't perceive illusions in the world because our mind has been healed. We will now see reality in the world because illusions are gone from our mind. Simple, 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 simple. So let's just keep going. The gift of life is yours to give because it was given you. The gift of life is yours to give because it was given you. You are unaware of your gift because you do not give it. You cannot make nothing live. You cannot make nothing live since it cannot be enlivened. <laughs> nothing can be enlivened. Nothingness can be enlivened. That's so funny. Therefore, you are not extending the gift you both have and are, and so you do not know your being. All confusion comes from not extending life, since that is not the will of your creator. You can do nothing apart from him, and you do do nothing apart from him. Keep his way to remember yourselves and teach his way, lest you forget yourselves. Give only honor to the sons of the living God and count yourselves among them gladly. Ooh, I like that. Give honor to the sons of the living God and count yourselves among them gladly. This is so crucial, right? We are learning how to think with God. We're learning how to live in the kingdom with God because we've never left the kingdom. It's an eternal kingdom, you know, and it includes God's children and we are God's children. We've never left. But the thing is, is we have thoughts of death. Thoughts of pain, suffering, sacrifice, which are the illusions that are in our minds. And because we have these thoughts of death, illusions, and sacrifice, it's literally those chirp loud. They chirp loud. And for as long as we believe in the loud chirps, we will see it. We will experience it, and we will believe it to be true. This is why God is saying um, it is a gift of life that is yours to give. You have to give this life. But what is life again? Life is eternal. There is no opposite. It cannot die. And so the only way that we are going to know that we're living and honestly living in the life of God is by giving that life, is by giving the answer, is by giving the healing grace that you would want to receive. So give only honor to the sons of the living God and count yourselves among them gladly. God knows not of death because there is no opposite to God. God does not condemn or hate or judge. He loves and he only loves. That is God's judgment, that he loves his son who's eternally free forever and ever and ever. Amen. And so if we think opposite to that, we will experience the opposite of that and we will be afraid. We'll be afraid of death. We'll be afraid of suffering. We'll be afraid of sickness. We'll be afraid of sacrifice. And we're going to live our life in fear, but that's living our life in fear separate from God. That's not what God wills. That's not what God wills. So if we give only honor to the sons of the living God, we must count 
ourselves among them gladly. Count yourself among being part of the living God gladly. Only honor is a fitting gift for those whom God himself created worthy of honor and whom he honors. Give them the appreciation which God accords them always because they are his beloved sons in whom he is well pleased. You cannot be apart from them because you are not apart from him. You cannot be apart from your brothers because you are not apart from God. Rest in his love and protect your rest by loving. Rest in his love and protect your rest by loving. But love everything he created of which you are a part or you cannot learn of his peace and accept his gift for yourself as yourself. Mm. You cannot know your own perfection until you have honored all those who were created like you. Oh my God, Jesus is so good, right? Like we will not know our own perfection, our own honor, our own holiness, our own greatness until we have seen the perfection and honored every single one of our brothers that is on the planet now, that was on it before, that is yet to come. This includes everyone and everything. This can seem like a daunting task to the mind that knows it has things to forgive and, and experiences to transform within. But let's just remember that this is the goal of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has been given us to help us to see only glory, only holiness, and only perfection in our brothers. And as we see only holiness, only glory, and only perfection in our brothers, again, we will see it in ourselves. They are like us. We are the same. Someone's Skyping me, but I'm not going there. All right. One child of God is the only teacher sufficiently worthy to teach another. One child of God is the only teacher sufficiently worthy to teach another. One teacher is in all your minds and he teaches the same lesson to all. Hello, Holy Spirit. One teacher is in all our minds and he teaches the same lesson to all. He always teaches you the inestimable worth of every son of God teaching it with infinite patience, born of the infinite love for which he speaks. Every attack is a call for his patience, since only his patience can translate attack into blessing. Those who attack do not know they are blessed. They attack because they believe they are deprived. Give, therefore, of your abundance and teach your brothers theirs. Do not share their delusions of scarcity, or you will perceive yourself as lacking. Along the same line, right? God is abundant. He has given us everything. So we literally have to share of this abundance and give of this abundance, even if it's just abundance of being, abundance of mind, abundance of patience, abundance of listening, abundance of blessing. Like this is what we are to give and to recognize that if we perceive attack or seemingly ex if we experience attack in our life, it is because that person doesn't know that they are blessed. And so either we can take the role of being the victim or the attacker, or we can just recognize being the victim, I'm also not knowing myself as blessed. So hello, we both have the same need. My attacker doesn't know he's blessed. I don't know I'm blessed because I'm the victim or I'm the vice versa, right? So what do you need? You need the blessing. So what do we do? We ask the Holy Spirit, the one teacher that is in both of our minds for the blessing, for the healing so I can give it. And once we value that healing, that blessing, that correction, more than the attack or error, it is given us instantly that is the function of the holy spirit and the only function of the holy spirit so this is beautiful give therefore of your abundance and teach your brothers theirs yes attack could never promote attack unless you perceived it as a means of depriving you of something you want yet you cannot lose anything unless you did not value it and therefore did not want it 
This makes you feel deprived of it. And by projecting your own rejection, you believe that others are taking it from you. Exactly. This is the idea of lack, right? If you project um, your idea of, what did he say? Yet you could not lose anything unless you did not value it <clears throat> and therefore did not want it. This makes you feel deprived of it. And by projecting your own rejection, you believe that others are taking it from you. I feel rejected from my family. I feel rejected from the kingdom. I feel rejected from life. And because I feel rejected, I'm going to project that lack and that's going to be my experience. Easy. One must be fearful if he believes that his brother is attacking him to tear the kingdom of heaven from him. This is the ultimate basis for all the ego's projections. Exactly. Exactly. If I'm going to perceive that my brother's attacking me, it is because I'm thinking that he's taking something from me. He's taking other my, my innocence, or he's taking the kingdom from me, or he's taking my peace of mind. He's taking that great relationship that I thought that was going to happen away from me. Yet we are realizing that you can't really attack. You can't take these things away from you. God has given you the kingdom. God has given you your innocence. God has given you everything. No one and nothing in this world can take that from you. So if you think that they can through attack or other ways, that's the misperception that needs to be healed. That is where we need to ask for healing and recognize that we have the same need as my brother. There's no difference. Being the part of your mind which does not believe it is responsible for itself and being without allegiance to God, the ego, the ego is incapable of trust. Projecting its insane belief that you have been treacherous to your creator, it believes that your brothers, who are as incapable of this as you are, are out to take God from you. Whenever a brother attacks another, this is what he believes. Projection always sees your will in others. If you will to separate yourself from God, that is what you will think others are doing to you. Period. If you think that in your mind, in your even subconscious mind, you feel that your will is to separate from God and ultimately being born into a body in this world, that is the first thought that we accept here. If your will is to be separate from God, well, then you will think that this is what others are doing to you, that they're wanting to be separate from you, they're wanting to reject you, they're wanting to abandon you. And that will ultimately be your experience because that is your subconscious thinking. And so you will bring that back to you, what you think you will experience, what is in your mind, what you perceive you project. You know, it's all connected, cause and effect. There is no separation there. And so once we see this, you know, we can start to be open to the actual healing. I love this part. You are the will of God. Not what is the will of God. You are the will of God. This is what we are to accept in place of illusions. You are the will of God. Do not accept anything else as your will or you are denying what you are. Deny this and you will attack, believing you have been attacked. But see the love of God in you and you will see it everywhere because it is everywhere. See his abundance in everyone and you will know that you are in him with them. When I see my abundance, know my abundance, I will be in abundance with my brothers. They are part of you as you are part of God. You are as lonely without understanding this as God himself is lonely when his sons do not know him. The peace of God is understanding this. <laughs> peace of God is understanding this. There is only one way out of the world's thinking, just as there is only one way into it. Understand totally by understanding totality. Oh my God, this is so simple. Okay, we're not trying to like sift through the ways of the world to try and understand what totality is. Totality is an experience that is given us when we accept that I am the will of God. When I can accept that I am the will of God, my brothers are the will of God. That is when we get to accept totality because we are leaving nobody out of this equation. Nobody is being left out of this equation. So understand totally by understanding totality. So 
beautiful. And totality is the gift that God has already given. So that's why our function is to become aware of all the illusions that we're, we're still holding in our mind. When we become aware of all the attack that we still have in our mind. Because as we bring those to the light and bring that to forgiveness or bring forgiveness to it, that is when it starts to cleanse away so that the recognition and understanding of totality can rise within us and we can understand completely the love that our Father has for all of His sons and what, how the, the love that all of His sons have for our Father. So here's our last paragraph here. Perceive any part of the ego's thought system as wholly insane, wholly delusional, and wholly undesirable and you have correctly evaluated all of it. This correction enables you to perceive any part of creation as wholly real, wholly perfect, and wholly desirable. I just want to bring to awareness how crucial this is, that the ego is wholly insane, wholly delusional, and wholly undesirable. There is nothing about the ego and its conception and stories of the world and the people in the world that's true. None of it. And as soon as we evaluate even one person correctly in this way, meaning recognize the ego of that person as being wholly insane, wholly undesirable, and wholly delusional, and recognizing that ego is not them, is when this correction enables you to perceive any part of creation, any part of creation God created, as wholly real, wholly perfect, and wholly desirable. Wanting this only to perceive creation, totality, as it really is. Wanting this only, you will have this only. And giving this only, you will be only this. The laws of God, beautiful souls. Wanting totality only, you will have this only. And giving this only, you will be only this. The gifts you offer to the ego are always experienced as sacrifices, but the gifts you offer to the kingdom are gifts to you. They will always be treasured by God because they belong to his beloved sons who belong to him. All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his. So I think the question becomes, what gifts are you giving? What gifts are you giving? What gifts am I giving? And when we get to ask what gifts we're giving in every situation, in thought, word, and deed, in thought, word, and deed, with every person on the face of the planet, we will be able to recognize why we're experiencing what we're experiencing because of the gifts we're giving. Either I'm giving ammo, gifts to the ego, which will always be sacrifice, pain, suffering, death, or I'm giving gifts to God, where I will know that I am in the kingdom, my brothers are in the kingdom with me, and I will experience the kingdom of heaven here and now because it is here and now. It's never left. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is eternal in the mind of God's son. And guess who we are? We are God's sons. So we have the ability to live in the kingdom of heaven by blessing our brothers. When we bless our brothers, we bless ourselves. Salvation is simple. When we let it be so, and not let the ego chirp in our ear to try and complicate the matter, we are here only for salvation. We're here only to accept the truth about ourselves. We're here only to give the gifts that God has given us to give. And we give those gifts that God has given us to give to our brothers, to the Christ, to the light, to the truth in them. Give it to the truth in them. We receive the truth. Done. Done deal. This is it. All power and glory are yours because the kingdom is his. We are one with each other and one with God, brother and sister souls. This is the truth as God created to be. And so I celebrate in this today. I celebrate in this every day. And, and I pray that all of you join me in this celebration, that you too may experience the truth about you and allow yourself to reside in the kingdom of heaven so that you can bless and help and save our brothers who are caught in the darkness like we all once were. Let's be the light. Be the light. I love you guys so much. Mwah.
the totality. Let's be totally committed all the time. I'm totally committed. I join you. High five. Peace and love, brothers.